All right, all right, all right. You all know why we're here and what we came to do this year. This is only the beginning of a very long season, but game one means just as much as game 82. Now, we have some new faces here that I really expect to make an impact for us this season. We've already seen flashes of what they can do for us, but I expect all of you to go out there and execute just like we did in camp. Ain't no more excuses. It's time to get serious. If we play our brand of basketball, there's no telling where this team can go. So get out there, get warm, and let's go win this game. Here we go, my first NBA game. This is something I've been waiting for my entire life. And to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. But I know this is where I belong. So I just gotta get out there and do what I was born to do. I hope I can make my family proud. We are at the sold out Phillips Arena. This is it, opening day. The regular season is set to begin and we're thrilled to bring you all the live action right here on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan alongside Craig Anthony and Clark Kellogg. It's all about the Eastern Conference. That's where the action is today as the Atlanta Hawks get ready to bat. We'll get to watch the first official NBA appearance from Kane. You know, he's a great young player and even a better young man. So, so personally, I couldn't be happier for him. I, I know he's thinking about the game, but I hope he's able to take a moment to just enjoy this accomplishment. Well said, and I hope so too. I mean, as a player, you want to stay even keeled, but it's almost impossible. I mean, there's just so much that you've gone through to reach this point. It has to be emotional. And Detroit. Looking at who they've got. Kane in at point guard. Aaron Baines out there with Johnson. Then there's Jackson, and it's Caldwell Pope in at the small forward. Back to Johnson. Kicks to Jackson. Here's Kane. It's good. The assist this time from Jackson. Kane makes the bucket. An important momentous occasion for this young guy getting his first points in an NBA uniform. And as the first quarter wraps up, already a double-digit lead. It's Atlanta. They lead by 12. 2K Sports back in a moment here at Phillips Arena in Atlanta. You know, Clark, you don't see that kind of perspective from all rookies, do you? You really don't, Kevin. I mean, I really like his approach to the game. What remains to be seen, though, is will that translate to consistent production on the court? Welcome back, everyone, to lopsided first quarter in the books already as we start the second quarter. And a very convincing performance here from the Hawks so far. Defense paying huge dividends for them through the first. Excellent hustle, and you know the coach has to be pleased with that effort at the defensive end. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade as the second quarter gets going. On the court for Atlanta, Splitter is out there with Mike Scott. Then there's Hardaway. Then there's Dennis Schroeder. And it's Holiday in at the two. Now here's Schroeder. He's guarded closely, and he gets it to go. Scott's got the lead up to 14 now for the Hawks. And Mike Scott out of Virginia becoming a pretty deadly spread four in the pros. He only shot a single three in his rookie season. Last season, threes made up almost half the shots he attempted. Johnson, the pass to Kane. Shot clock at six. And it's off the back rim. No good. The Hawks leading by 14. Splitter sets a screen. A shot by Holiday. Nobody around. Connects from three-point range. Holiday's got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. So it's both teams making substitutions here. And through one half, it has a... A 
Okay, listen. Let's just put that first half behind us as quickly as possible. Here's what I took away. Okay, let's keep it going. And as we begin the second half, first half wasn't even close. He's checked in for Jody Meeks. Detroit's gone one of two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. On the court for the Pistons, Kane in a two guard. Ilya Sova out there with Andre Drummond. Then it's Marcus Morris, and it's Jennings in at the point. And they're one of four here to start the second half. Hawks have got a paltry 0 of 6 to begin the third quarter. What a terrible start to the half. T kicks to Horford. Comes up empty off the pick. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. Dishes to Morris. Six on the shot clock. Pulls from the top of the key. That's good on the jump shot. Morris has got eight points. You can't afford to give him that kind of a look. Well, you know, he came off a good screen, but still, as a defender, you got to do a better job of fighting over and through that. Horford's shot is good. He's been one of their more reliable options today, guys. I mean, his shooting has led them to this lead. And, guys, you hear about how the Hawks are the jokingly referred to as the Spurs of the East. It has to do with their coach, Mike Budenholzer, who, who's really brought that philosophy here to Atlanta. Back to Drummond. Outside Jennings. Trains it from beyond the arc. Jennings has got five points in the quarter. As long as they keep spraying them from deep, we're going to have ourselves one exciting finish. Yeah, it, it took them a while, but now they're starting to get into a flow from outside. And boy, is that time. Well, for Coach Budenholzer, Greg, he did spend 19 years with the Spurs, so it makes a lot of sense. Clark, he won four titles during his time there in San Antonio. And Kevin, you can really see how he's adapted and brought the motion offense over to this team. And it's worked well. There's a four-second difference from the shot clock to the game clock. We've got Paul Millsap. Dennis Schroeder is out there with Kyle Korver. And it's Splitter, and it's Cephalosia in at the three set. So that's the Hawks' five. Schroeder kicks to Millsap. Misses the three. Here's Kane. Off target with that shot. And so Atlanta takes this one by a big margin. They won this game going away. They were the better basketball team, Clark, by far tonight. No question about it, Kevin. They certainly gave their fans. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Kevin, much appreciated. And now let's present our Jordan player, Al Horford. Yeah, Al Horford put in some serious work bringing home this win tonight. He's always been the definition of a great two-way player. And when you've got... And that's it for our broad... Coming home, New York City, baby. I'll be honest, I'm pretty excited. Mama, Pops, and Cece, yeah, they're going to be there. Playing in front of them in the NBA uniform for the first time is going to be a special moment for me. Now, I know all of Harlem's going to be watching. No pressure, right? It's all good, though. I've been waiting for this my entire life. And now be ready. Welcome to our Sunday night broadcast here on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with Greg Anthony and Clark Kellogg and our sideline reporter, Doris Burke. Back in Brooklyn, the Nets tip off the beginning of a homestand. First chance of the season for them to go up against this Pistons team. Guys, they came out on top of the season series matchup a season ago, taking two of the three away from them.
Comes in for Thaddeus Young. Hollis Jefferson's checked in for Johnson. And Donald Sloan subbed in for Jarrett Jack. And Detroit looking at who they've got. Kane, he's in at the point. Aaron Baines out there with Johnson. Then it's Jody Meeks. And it's Caldwell Pope in at the three spot. Bargnani kicks to Bogdanovich. There's a screen by Robinson. Just five on the clock. Brooklyn needs to get off a shot here. Here's Sloan. No good and tight defense there. Bothered that shot. Kicks it to Baines. Over in the corner, Caldwell Pope. Passes it to Kane. He nails it, and we're tied up. <laughs> wow, risky shot there, size-wise, but the incredible skill that he possesses allows that one to go. Well, the quick, high release negated any height disadvantage he had right there. Here's Hollis Jefferson looking for his first basket still in this. Dishes it to Bargnani. Hits some rim on the way in, and the bucket's good. I love how he used his height advantage on that shot. And he had the nice, soft touch with it, too. Kane, the pass to Baines, and he throws it down hard with one hand. Tell you what, he's not an easy guy to stop when he's got his sight on the rim. Never has been, never will be. He is a determined finisher. Did he just go chop-chop there to put that one hand? Tomahawk slam. Drops in the breakaway layup. 58 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Pass to Hollis Jefferson. There's a screen by Robinson. Hollis Jefferson passes to Sloan. Off the pick. Knocked away. Well, for Detroit, their last game a loss to the Thunder in Oklahoma City. Yeah, foul trouble early on, I thought, set the tone in that game, and it just made it difficult for them to get over the hump. Yeah, it really got them out of sync, and that hurt them big time. Forced them to go much deeper into their bench than they would have liked to. Bargnani a screen on Johnson. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Sloan. Kane grabs the board. Here's Caldwell Pope. No good trying to beat the buzzer. At the end of one, a closely contested game so far. The Pistons. And that's a coach Lionel Holland's known for his no-nonsense style, but he'll tell you he's still got a good sense. I told him all, you can joke with me, you can laugh at me. I'm not perfect. You'll see me hobbling out there on the court. You'll see me stumble. <laughs> I still don't think the coach... Robinson comes in for Young. Hollis Jefferson's checked in for Joe Johnson. And Bogdanovich is subbed in for Donald Sloan. And a different look here for the Pistons. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for Andre Drummond. Johnson comes in for Marcus Morris. Jody Meeks, he's checked in for Jackson. And it's Kane in for Brandon Jennings. And Detroit looking at who they got. Kane, he's in a point guard. Johnson is out there with Ilias Ova. Then it's Aaron Baines, and it's Meeks in at the two-guard spot. After the Nets' big moves the past couple years, they were looked at as an older team, but you break it down, and you know, Greg, they're not as old as you think. Actually had the fifth youngest team of anyone in the postseason. And so, though they seem older just because so many of their players had playoff experience or came into the league at a young age. Jack's shot is good. And I like the fact that he really was unfazed by that scoreless first quarter. And now you can see him getting into a rhythm. 133 left to play here in the second quarter. Oh, here's Freak. Guarded closer. He kicks it to Ilias Hope. Here's Kane. Rebounded by the Nets. Tough loss coming against Cleveland in their last game play. And I think they could hold their heads high from that performance, you know, despite the final score being what it was. I agree with you. I mean, it was a tough game played in a tough environment on the road, and they were in it right until the bitter end. So that's good stuff. There's not a lot you can say that hasn't been said before about his skill at the charity strike. Outside Jack. 
102 left in the first half. That's good. Jack's got the lead up to two now for the Nets. A great second quarter here after a difficult first. I'd say they knocked the rust off. Sometimes it takes a little while before you get the blood flowing and you find your rhythm. Kane, no luck. That's really too easy a chance to miss, guys. He needs to be more aggressive and focused on his finishes. Jack again to Leosova. Jack's shot is good. And, and look, he's not the best athlete, but he's able to create the space he needs to operate. We've got a nine-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Leosova sets a screen for free. In transition, here come the Nets. A huge slam, the perfect end of the fast break. And that's the kind of play you just do not want to give up defensively. You lose the possession and give up a quick two at the other end. That's losing basketball. Especially when you can't afford to give up any buckets. That's a nice lead now. Johnson dishes to Ilias Hope. That's good, and it's Johnson with the assist. Ilias Hope has got 10 points in the quarter. Yeah, it's such a sweet three-point stroke there, and it can really open things up inside. Ladies and gentlemen, go! Here we go now, the start of the third quarter. Welcoming you And so it's the Pistons who come out on top here. This win, such a tremendous emotion. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Thank you, Kevin. And Andre Drummond. He led the way tonight with a double-double and was a major reason why they won tonight. His effort and intensity gave them the... And that wraps... What a life, eh, freak? One minute you're playing 21 and horse on the courts in Harlem, and the next moment you're in the showroom, configuring the gunmetal and graphite exterior of your luxury car and your iPad mini. <laughs> oh, I bet you get a crazy crowd when you drive that car around the block in the old neighborhood, huh? Yeah, living the dream. <laughs> Mad pandemonium. But folks from back around the way are real proud of me. Yeah, I hear you. Local kid makes good. You know, it kind of reminds me of when I took my tech stock public and I rang the New York Stock Exchange bell and my mom's friends called her up and said, Maggie, is that your son on Bloomberg News this morning ringing the bell? And my mom says, yes, sir, Bob, it was him. That was a great moment, freak. And you know, our lives are like a pearl necklace of great moments all strung together with the finest silk thread of memories. And we have to be very careful how we cultivate those pearls and you thread that necklace. Does this meeting by any chance have to do with Vic Van Leer? I grew up in the burbs, freak. I wasn't poor, upper middle class, comfortable. My daddy worked as an accountant for one of the largest insurance firms in the country. Smart with his money. Mom didn't have to work. I went to boarding school. And then my dad died of a heart attack when I was a freshman at MIT. I was a movie geek, wanted to be a civil engineer, but I made my fortune by becoming a hybrid of both those interests. My dad didn't want me to be an accountant. <laughs> oh, listen to this. My best friend was a guy named Isidore. <laughs> yeah, we called him Izzy. He was one of the smartest human beings I have ever met in my life. I mean, Izzy was taking second year college calculus courses as a high school sophomore, right? Straight A student, full ride to MIT. Izzy had the world at his fingertips. But he was always looking for trouble, and trouble found him. He ran with the wrong crowd. And when we got to MIT, he got this great job working for a financial consulting firm in Boston. Mm. But every weekend, he would pew, fly to Vegas. <laughs> you see, Izzy had a system for counting cards in Vegas that had the big casinos on the strip. Oh, stymie! He would come back to MIT with suitcases filled with $200,000 in cold cash. What? Yeah. So your man Izzy was getting hit off like that? Like a fat rat in a cheddar cheese factory, freak. 
Okay, so what happened to this dude, Izzy? Because he's dope. <laughs> no, not dope. Dead. After he'd been missing for three weeks, the Nevada State Police never found hide nor hair of Isidore. And our friendship took a hit when he asked me to hang out with him in Vegas. And I said I wouldn't do it because I knew he was on a dark and twisted path in his life. And yes, yes, he was my dude. But no way was I going to throw my life away trying to show my loyalty to a guy who really and truly didn't understand what loyalty was all about. So this meeting is about Vic. Correctamente. Okay, well, sir, Vic isn't Izzy. And why is that, freak? Well, for one thing, you and your dead friend Izzy didn't grow up poor. Me and Vic grew up in a neighborhood where we had to look over our shoulder every two seconds to make sure nobody was going to walk up on us and rob us. True. Izzy and I did not grow up in the hood. But we, like you, thankfully grew up in a two-parent household. But even that wasn't enough for Izzy. He wasn't satisfied. He was always looking for a five-alarm fire when he already had the warmth and comfort of a loving family. This is not about class warfare, freak. This is about the consequences of making bad choices and risking it all when you feel like you have nothing to lose. Vic is like a brother to me, sir. But you shouldn't be Brother Vic's keeper, freak. Would a brother go looking for trouble and put your career and your livelihood at risk by getting into fights at nightclubs and seedy after-hour joints and then scream to the media, yeah, it's all good, I'm an F.O.F., friend of freak. It's all misunderstanding. Y'all be haters, don't hate my game. I don't think a brother would do that to someone they really cared about, but a guy who looked at you like a meal ticket would. No. So you don't understand Vic? Really? I don't understand. No. Look, man, it was a misunderstanding with the guy in the next VIP booth. His honey started flirting with me. So naturally, I started flirting back. Next thing I know, Captain Cornball's off my grill piece. Beefing next to he know. <laughs> he got a two-piece and a biscuit on his left eye. <laughs> hey, nah, nah, I, I don't know where them. And he damn sure wasn't me. <laughs> hey, Captain Cornball's mad because I'm an F-O-F, friend of freak. <laughs> hey, but well check this out, though. He needs to train that hottie before he leave the house, though. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> he's... He's hot as ain't loyal, man. <laughs> What's there to understand? Are you freaking blind? You know, I just want to know, how much did you pay your lawyers to make all this go away? Almost 100000 Excuse me, son, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I said I paid almost $100,000. Exactly. And if you keep riding shotgun with Vic, you're going to go broke. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. But Vic is my friend, and I grew up with him. How many times I got to tell you, sir? Freak, this is not a request. I am not asking you to do this. I am telling you to do this. And the first order of business is that Mr. Vic Van Leer is banned from traveling with you on the road. Vic is banned from the locker room. And Vic is banned from this arena. And if I catch this guy, Vic, in or anywhere near the facilities, Mr. Vic Van Leer will be arrested for trespassing. Are you serious, sir? Brother. I'm as serious as cancer. We all know that can be deadly. You know, when me and Vic were kids, playing summer tournaments at the Dome, we always imagined making it to the pros. And after the crowds left, just a street light was on the court, like 11.30, 12 midnight, even one in the morning sometimes. <laughs> we used to practice player introductions, running on the court, giving dab high-fiving the teammates. Vic, he would act as an announcer. You know, he would introduce me, announce my name on a loudspeaker, and the jumbotron would uh, flash my image like a little guy dressed in long shorts and a jersey. And now, fresh off his three-game, 62-point scoring streak, the youngest player to ever do so in NBA history, frequency vibrations. <sighs> Sir, 
So me and Vic were sitting in those empty bleachers at the dome and dreamed like nobody's business. And now, and now I'm living a dream. For real. And in so many ways, Vic was part of that. Please, listen to me. I mean, I know this guy's your dude from way back. Look, uh, me and Vic go way back like the front seats of a 67 Cadillac. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. We go way back. Did you say, did you say front seats? Fr front seats of a 67 Cadillac. We go way back like the front seats of a 67 Cadillac. Well, do you have any crickets? <laughs> I'm going to be the hit once again at Herbie Island, Sun Valley Shindig, because my fellow billionaires love it when I walk and talk that talk. So that <laughs> almost sounds... No, let me tell you exactly what it sounds like. I respect, admire, and most importantly, love you as a human being and a role model but I pay you a lot. And I mean, I pay you a lot of money to play for my team. And I am in this game to win it. And you can't win it with an albatross around your neck like Vic. So Vic is done. History. And here's some more lingo that I picked up from a former megastar who used to play for me several seasons ago. Thought I would never release him until I did. And now he's the sixth man on a struggling team in Venice. And yeah, I'm talking Venice with the canals and the gondolas and Harry's Bar, not the street ballers next to the fortune tellers on the beach in Cali. This guy used to tell me when he thought there was a player destroying our team, don't be a hero, cut that zero. And that is what I am telling you about, Vic freak. Don't be a hero, cut that zero. The only thing Vic brings into your life is headache and unwanted and unnecessary negative attention. And it will begin to affect your mindset. And when it affects your mindset, it's gonna affect your play. And when it affects your play, it's gonna affect my team. And when it affects my team, it's gonna affect my money. And if it affects my money, Google Translate will become your new freaking friend. I want a championship ring, freak, and I want you to help me get that ring. And banners after banners hanging from the Raptors in this arena. So, freak, hear me clearly and hear me good. V, G, G, Vic, gotta go. Handle your business. And remember, that contract you signed contains a morality clause, a very important clause that revolves around your conduct on and off the court and how it can negatively impact my team. Now, I don't want you to have to learn Italian or Croatian as a second language. And hey, playing pro ball overseas, there's nothing wrong with that. But the arenas are nothing like this, nor will the money be the same. And on top of all of that, this is the U.S. of A, the greatest freaking country in the world. Ask yourself, is Vic worth all that? Think about it. Think long, think wrong. tell you about Vic. He, he has his bad rap. It's not, and I understand some of his judgments might shadow his actual character. He's not that at all. Man, Vic, let me tell you something. We actually, like, we have love for each other. We're brothers. Blood couldn't make us any closer at all. I mean, he, he has so much um, loyalty to me and to my family. You could see even Cece, you know, has uh, issues with him, but he's, he still loves her. He still loves her.